see it. I can't believe it. Oh, my friend, make no mistake. There's a decision you must make. All your sin you must forsake, or you'll burn in the fiery lake. If they ask you if you know, after that, where you will go, look him in the eye like soul. Say, heaven, yeah. Well, Dad, Dad, whoa, whoa, whoa. if you want to have a fun time at your anniversary tonight, I wouldn't go in that kitchen. You're right, son. I'm staying right here. John, do you feel all right about leaving the kids alone tonight? In history. Will they get a load of me? We interrupt once again with this special The hockey mask killer is still out there. Police have released a sketch of the killer. This sketch has been submitted to us what? by Kelly Ward. It doesn't look anything he will like me. Gift certificate for it. Well, which one's it gonna be, huh? Uh, just any one of them's fine. No. Oh, oh geez, scum face. No. Get over here. My, my name's Doug. But you can call me scum face. I'm taking him with me. Back up. Don't you move for 30 minutes. Your son's gonna get it. <laughs> I said, don't move. Take off the mask. Quit hiding. Daddy again. <laughs> you can see your dad again. And your, your dad's in heaven, man. You, you can go to heaven. I mean, God, God can forgive you, man. God, God loves you. All you have to do is ask him. I'll help you. Okay? Okay. Father, I pray that you, you'll touch Joe right now. Lord, that you'll show him in his heart how, how much you love him. I'm what? scared, Daddy! Walk away from it. You're not no. the same person. You're not going to get away. Just, just give it up. Give it up, Joe. Please give it up. Don't do it. It's your choice.
No, 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 no. Okay, fine. Don't have any breakfast. I was just trying to be nice. Doug, get up. Son, the funeral starts in 30 minutes. We need to leave now. Your father has to go by the store. We're going to have to meet you over there. Okay. Are you sure you want to go to this? Yeah, Mom. I, I, I need to go. Why? Because, I mean, no one else is going to be there. I mean, I mean who's going to be there? Like, uh, other murderers? All his friends are in jail. Listen, listen, Clarence and I will go uh, together. You guys go on ahead. In fact, you, you don't even have to go, okay? No, we're going. We're going because it's not going to be easy for you, Doug, to be there. We want to be there for you. Thanks, Mom. Don't be late. Okay. You just bolted into our house. Whatever happened to knocking? Yeah, you know, we could all have been naked. <gasps> oh, naked? Oh, I'm sorry. I could have been naked. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Is, is anybody naked? Yeah, Clarence, we're all naked. Oh. I'm naked. You're naked. We're all naked in the eyes of the Lord. Biggie Joe? Oh, I'm just going to go on up to Doug's room then, okay? Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, we're supposed to meet Doug over there. Right, we have to go to the shoe store first. Why do we have to go by the store? Because I don't have any shoes to wear with this suit. What happened to your shoes? Honey, I'll tell you about it on the way to the shoe store, okay? What happened to your what? shoes? Oh, what? Doug, you're naked! Clarence, turn around. Okay, okay. Simon says turn around. Halfway, please. Simon says halfway. Okay, Simon says stay right there. Simon says I'm putting on my pants. Simon says I'm getting my shirt. Simon says... Okay, Simon says everything's fine. Doug, we're going to be late for the funeral. I know, okay, I just woke up. I had this incredible dream about how Joe died. Clarence, I, I don't understand something. What? Something that, that Joe said in his dying breath. I, I don't understand it. What? Sit down. Sit down. As he was dying, he looked at me, and he said, Arnold. Uh, Arnold? Arnold. 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 Arnold? Uh, <laughs> Doug, um... It's really weird. Uh, I wouldn't tell anybody else if I were you. No, I'm not gonna. I am just so glad that he's in heaven right now. That's what I'm happy about. W would you make my bed, please? Uh, Doug, are you sure? Uh, are you sure that Joey is in heaven? I mean, some people might consider what he did, I don't know, uh, suicidal? I mean, when the cops thought he had the gun, and even though he really didn't, he knew that if he was going to turn around and go, <gasps> like that, the cops were going to mow him down. I know, I know. That bothers me, too, okay? Heaven, though. <clears throat> I'd love to go to heaven. I'd love to go to heaven right now. <laughs> but I'm not going to take any shortcuts to get there. No. <clears throat> I wonder what it'd be like. <laughs> hey, you want to find out? Yeah? Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. Turn around. <laughs> okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes, head back. Imagine, if you will, heaven. Imagine, imagine soft white clouds in heaven. <laughs> oh, like the ones in the toilet tissue commercial. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and you're going through the pearly gates. The pearly gates, you're going through, and you begin to walk down the streets of solid gold. You're walking down the streets of solid gold. Solid gold. So the dancers will be there, huh? What dancers? <laughs> the solid gold dancers. No, they're not going to be there. Well, who knows if they'll be there. Anyways, you walk down the streets of gold into the throne room of God, and the Lamb of God is being worshipped by the angels. Worshipping. Meh. <sighs> Meh. Stop that. And as you worship, then you go out of the throne room, and you go into, uh, oh, you go into the river of life. You take a little dip. <laughs> and you're swimming around, and you can't drown. <laughs> and then you get out of the river, you dry off, and you go and hang out at your mansion. <laughs> And, of course, later on, you rule the nations with a rod of iron. Oh, Doug! <laughs> we need to be late for the funeral. Come on. No, no, we can't be late. Mom said we cannot be late. Let's go. Let's be early. Let's Come on. Be on time. 
I don't know, Doug. I'm still a little confused on, on how to act at the funeral. Because if Joey's in heaven, then I should be really glad and really happy and joyful. But if he's in hell, then I should be sad, maybe even mad and, and really remorseful. It, it'd just be a lot easier if he was in heaven, because then i know how to act. Clarence, he is in heaven. I, I prayed with him. Come on, the guy went around committing murder, killing people. Then at the last minute, you pray with him and he's in heaven? Yeah. Okay, so like, if I wanted to go around murdering people, well, maybe not murder, but I could think of some sins I could really enjoy and, and just live that way for a long time. And, and then at the last minute, you could pray with me and I'd go to heaven. Clarence, that is stinking wrong. Wrong thinking, Clarence, wrong. I don't know. Quit it. Ow! Now listen, do you have enough gas in your car to get there? Yeah, do you know how to get there? Of course I do. I got the directions. Okay. Your tie looks weird, buddy. Clarence, I thought you said that we had enough gas to get there. We did have enough gas to get there from your house to wherever we were going, but I didn't plan on driving all over town. You're the one that got us lost. Okay, okay, listen, you go around, see if you can borrow some money. I will go and get some directions, okay? Yeah, you know, it's the uh, first time I've ever been in a bar. <laughs> Of course, uh, I've been thinking about it a lot lately and uh, maybe kind of getting into this kind of lifestyle, you know what I mean? <sighs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> no. I just, uh, I, all I need is a phone. I need to get some directions to a funeral place. Are you sure this isn't where you're supposed to be? No, this is definitely where I should not be right here. This is a wake. Yeah, but I'm going to a funeral. Just, just a phone, please. Phone. Hi, phone? Thank you. Ah, me and my buddy here, right? We run out of gas. The car is deader than a stinking doorknob, right? <laughs> and so I was wondering if uh, we might be able to borrow some money for gas. Do you want to interview Roy? Okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, hello there, lad. Don't believe we've had the opportunity to meet. Uh, how long have you known the deceased? Deceased? He... He's... He's, he's dead? Well, yes, he is, and you don't have to whisper. Everybody here knows this is awake. Awake? He's anything but awake. How, uh, how did he die, and, and why in the world you got him sitting up there in a chair like that? Well, basically because we wanted to remember him as he was. And we didn't think it'd be a good idea to put him in here in a bed with a bunch of women in it, so we sat him up in the chair there with a drink in his hand. Oh, <laughs> So, like, you weren't with him when he died, or, or he didn't, like, repent right before he died or anything, did he? No, as a matter of fact, he went just like that. And I want you to know, right now, he's gnashing his teeth and worms are crawling up his nose. And he's screaming at the top of his lungs in the torment of eternal hell and damnation. Would you be liking a green beer, lad? No, I don't think I'll be liking a green beer or any other colored beer for that matter. Nor do I think I'll be doing any sinning, neither, if you know what I mean. Well, what did you come in here for? Well, uh, me and me buddy, we uh, ran out of gas and we need a little money to get back on the road. I think we got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there as quick as we can. All right. Bye. Great. Hey, thanks a lot. You've been a big help. Clarence, I got directions. I uh, got the money. Let's get out of here. No, I got the money. You got the directions. <laughs> you can thank him for it. Really? <laughs> well, uh, hey, thanks a lot, guy. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> You're busy. Have a good day. Oh, that's all right. I don't think he'll be needing it where he's going. <laughs> yes, O'Brien always kept a fiver, folded up like a little football in his right pocket. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Clarence, I cannot believe that we missed the entire funeral. Well, look, we didn't miss the entire funeral. I mean, the best, the best part's still to come here at the graveyard. Isn't yeah, but it's not like a movie where you can kind of catch the first half on the second feature. Look, I know that. Should we really be walking through here? Problem. I just hope Mom and Dad are mad at us because we're so late. Some of you might be wondering where Joey is. He's right here. Until his spirit is done. Where have you been? Permanence. The main thing is, 
what was once a sick, I don't think I want to know. Twisted, desperate individual is now at peace. And I'm at peace. And I believe the whole town is a little more at peace, too. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Lord, don't let the coffin rust. <laughs> Clarence, that is disrespectful. Sorry. Look, there's Joey's mom. What tipped you off? She's wearing black. shouldn't drink this. It's just Kool-Aid. Non-alcoholic Kool-Aid? Yes, Clarence. Oh. Doug, I'm so sorry for what my son put you through. Well, you know, uh, Joey played a little rough in the game of life. He uh, broke a lot of rules, packed a gun, pulled it out on me. Shut down, Clarence. You were the last one to see him alive. Did he talk about anything? Oh, yeah. Oh, Joey, he uh, talked about a lot of different things. Alice, may, may I call you Alice? Of course. Uh, I guess probably the thing I remember most that he talked about was his, uh, his dad. His father? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe he talked about his father. He never talked about his father. Oh, no? How come? Well, he said it's because he hated him. I say it's because he couldn't separate the good times from the bad. They were so close. And then Joey started hanging around that bad crowd. They got caught stealing a car. That was it. His father cut him off. He could never forgive Joey for that. And then six months later, Joseph died, and then Joey couldn't forgive him for that. It just doesn't make any sense, does it? No, but, you know, a lot of things Joey did didn't make sense, you know. <laughs> That's just it. He became violent. <laughs> a little piggy bank. He hit me with it. And then it broke. And then he felt so sorry about it that he took it to his bedroom and glued it back together. It's the only thing I have left to remember him by. That's, uh, that's real special, isn't it? You know, something happened to Joe while he was in prison. He changed. You know, he'd gotten bitter and angry. I, I couldn't tell if he was on drugs or... Honestly, if he'd lost his mind, I just don't know. Arnold. Where's Arnold? Arnold? Arnold. Arnold, Joey's piggy bank. That's what he named him when he was five years old. Arnold. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Looks like Arnold bought the farm. <laughs> Arnold! Clarence! Arnold! Arnold! That's what Joey said when he died. That's what he was whispering to me. Arnold, he said. Look! <laughs> Dear Mom, I don't know why I do the things I do. Prison was hell. I can't believe what I did there. Now I can't stop myself. I'm sorry. I wish I were dead. And maybe I am, and that's why you're reading this. I hate God, and I know he hates me. I wish someone could explain this. I need help. I love you, Mom. 
Jimmy. Listen, uh, Mrs. Kennedy, I, I got something to tell you. Uh, before before Joey died, I, I talked to him a lot, and, and he received Jesus Christ into his life. God forgave him. Right now, Joey is in heaven. <laughs> like he killed people. He committed suicide. How could he be in heaven? Jo Joey was... Joey, Joey was sick. He, he, he was sick in his mind. I mean, he didn't know what was going on. I mean, he didn't know what he was doing. Uh, all I know is he, he made some big mistakes, okay? He made big mistakes. But I want you to know that, that the shed blood of Jesus is greater than any mistake Joey ever made. It can't erase all those horrible things. Listen, uh, I don't know how to say this, but we we don't go to heaven. Joey doesn't go to heaven. You don't go to heaven because of good things that you do. I mean, if that was the reason we went to heaven, not, none of us would get there. The only way that anyone gets forgiven or, or goes to heaven is because of the mercy and the grace of God. Listen, I mean, your life, I mean, is it, is it right with God? I mean, if you were to die, do you know that you'd go to heaven? I don't think so. I was a bad mother. I didn't stop that music he listened to. I didn't stop the crowd he ran with. And I'm angry. I'm angry because they died and left me alone. Miss, Mrs. Kennedy, you don't have to be alone. I mean, Jesus said that, that if we ask him into our life, that he would never leave us nor forsake us. You don't have to be by yourself. He'll be with you. And I know that, that he can't bring Joseph and Joey back, but one day you can know that you'll see them in heaven. And until that day, God can give you a peace to live on this earth. I mean, do you want to pray? You can pray. Yes. Jesus, we just ask you to touch Mrs. Kennedy's heart. We ask you to do a work in her life. We ask you to heal her heart, to restore her faith and her trust in you. Just, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, oh, Jesus, I ask you to help me. I ask you to help me. To forgive me. To forgive me. I want to know you. I want to know you. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. Have you ever had someone that you really loved that died and you wondered, man, I wonder if they're in heaven and uh, if they are in heaven, I wonder what heaven's like or, or maybe have you ever dreamed, what would it really be like to be in heaven? You know, I think we've all had these thoughts and maybe gone through these things in our lives. I know I have. I had a dear friend of mine that passed away in an airplane accident a number of years ago and I thought, I thought, man, it'd be so cool to be with him. I wonder what he's doing right now up there in heaven. Well, I want to read you scripture. This will help some of you. It's found in the book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse Verse number 21, and Paul writes this, he says, For to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. For if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I choose I want not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Now, I want you to notice there that Paul said it was more needful for him to be in the flesh with that local church there in Philippi. He said, yeah, it's far better for me to go to heaven and to be with Christ. He said, that would be the most awesome thing in the world. But he said, it's better that I be with you. You know, I've had young people come up to me who've been in really depressed situation and circumstances. Their life has been a shambles and a mess. Maybe their home life is just tearing apart. And they've said, man, I, I just like to kill myself. I just like to commit suicide and just go to heaven and get out of this whole mess. I want you to know that that is a cop out. Someone says, well, if I commit suicide and I'm a Christian, would I go to heaven? You know what? I can't answer that. 
And that's a, that's a tough decision to make, and you're taking a risk uh, thinking that way, acting that way, and for sure uh, ever daring to do that. I would say this to you. There is a destiny and a hope and a vision that God wants to give you for your life. No matter how bad you are right now in your circumstances, there's something better around the corner if you'll just believe God for it. In fact, I want to read you a scripture. It's found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33. And in this situation, Jeremiah was in a bad position. In fact, he was in prison. He was in the lowest, you know, place you could be here in prison because he was a prophet of God. And it says in verse number one, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in prison in the center court. And it said, thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I want you to see that in the midst of Jeremiah's worst circumstances, God said, if you'll call unto me, if you'll put your trust in me, if you'll hope unto me, I'll give you a vision. I will show you great and mighty things which you don't even know. And I want you to know, no matter how bad it's been for you, God's got great things for you. You need to understand that you have destiny. So many people, especially young people in this world, don't believe they have a vision, don't believe they have a future. They're afraid of what might come uh, in the future. And I want you to know, God's got some great plans for your life. Life. I heard the story recently that just grieved my heart. A 15-year-old teenager was caught trying to rob a convenience store by the police in Detroit, uh, Michigan. And when he was apprehended, taken down to the, uh, to, to the courthouse, they asked him, why did you do it? He said, because it was a no-lose situation. There were only three things that could happen. Number one, I'd get away with it. That'd be great. Number two, I'd be uh, killed and shot. And he said, that would be better than the way my life is right now. Or number three, I'd be put in jail, and that'd be better than where I'm living right now. And that's how desperate so many young people are in this world. They don't have a vision. They don't have a dream in their life. God wants to give you a destiny. God's got something great in this life for you to do. You know what? Uh, there was a young man named John Wesley. He was born as one of 13 children in a family. If someone in a family could ever feel uh, unaccepted or maybe unloved or maybe not cared for, maybe like he was just a number, it would have been John Wesley, one of 13 kids. And yet he rose up to be one of the greatest men of God in the history of our world. An entire church denomination was started because of his impact in the world and so I want you to know God's got a plan for your life yes one day you will go to heaven one day if you know Christ you'll be there and I mean you'll you'll be blessed it'll be an awesome place but I want you to go knowing that you've accomplished what God's had for you to do the Bible says he'll wipe away every tear in heaven in Revelation 21 verse 4 I believe some of those tears will be of saints who didn't do the will of God on this earth they didn't obey Jesus they didn't do what God called them to do God wants you to have joy when you get to heaven so that when you see him he can say well done thou good and faithful servant and you can enjoy all the blessings of heaven run down the streets of gold swim in the river of life get into the throne room and worship almighty god with thundering lightnings coming out of the throne it's going to be an awesome place there may be some of you that are watching right now you don't know if you're ready to go to heaven you don't know if you died right now if you'd be right with god well you can know you know that jesus turned to the thief on the cross and as the thief asked for help jesus said today you'll be with me in paradise it doesn't take a long time all you have to do is call upon Jesus and you can be with him one day you can go to heaven and right now he can come to live in you if you don't know Jesus let me pray for you right now father I pray for everyone that's watching this program that if they don't know you that they would call upon you and with your love and your mercy you would save them and that one day you would take them to their eternal home and the reward and we thank you Jesus for being with every viewer for causing your love and your conviction to come upon them that they might serve you all of their days in Jesus' name, amen.